Hello Knockouts, Tanya TKO here. And as you see from the title of the video, we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about Charlemagne the Rapist in this video. And I you know, I've mm, For those of you who are not aware of what's going on and what have been going on, there's this radio host by the name of Charlemagne who calls himself the God. And it, Stories have been surfacing lately about stories have been surfacing lately about alleged rapes that he's been uh, a part of, rapes that he's done, including the rape of his own wife and uh, some charges that were brought against him um, from a 15-year-old girl who he raped 18 years ago when he was 22, right? And he admitted, part of the reason that I'm calling him Charlemagne the Rapist and I'm not holding back is because he has admitted to rape. He pled guilty to the charges. And part of the reason that he has not, part of the reason that he was not sent to prison is because he pled down. Um, and I believe he pled down to perhaps, it, um, uh, you know what, I, I don't want you to quote me on what his actual plea deal was. But they started the process of the, gathering his DNA, getting his statements, they filed the police report, and the mother of the 15-year-old girl at the time was like, you know what, I think it'll be too much for my daughter to actually go and, um, and go through with the whole court proceedings. So she, her daughter was a minor now, remember, so she stopped her daughter from being able to, to go through with the court thing, but it didn't help her because... The girl's name is Jessica. She came out just recently and she posted her take of it because this is what's been happening. All right. So Charlemagne was on a radio show. He started this podcast where he started talking about this girl that he had raped. And part of, well, according to him, it wasn't even rape. He just wanted to talk about the griminess that, that dudes did back in the days, the griminess that they would participate in, and how he was using this story as some sort of, look how far I've come, and this is what's out there sort of thing, so that people can look at their own actions, but even inside of the, even inside of the podcast, he himself, when a person said, this is that was rape he was like ha, 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 no it wasn't right and I think that there are a lot of men out there who participate in actions that are rape sexual assault etc and there are a lot of women there are a lot of women and girls who are the victims of rape sexual assault and they themselves don't even know it so I'm making this video because a lot of people have come forward asking me a lot of my knockouts have come forward asking for my take on it when I originally wrote my notes I was really angry um, so I don't know if in talking about it I'm going to become angry again I just really want to give my take there may be some profanity in this video I've never I haven't used profanity in the 10 years that I've been making videos but this particular case hits really hard close to home and I'm going to tell you guys about my rape and how my rape took place right because there are a lot of there's a lot of questionable questionable behavior out there so nonetheless um part of what makes me angry is that we live in a society and we have these cultures that tell boys and tell men to get sex to get vagina from a woman from a girl by any means necessary by any tactic possible it doesn't matter whether she's coherent awake with it interested in it participating in it or doesn't even want it it doesn't even it it, it, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem to matter and part of what upsets me is the imbalance because on the other hand we start we teach girls that once a guy has gotten it from you you're used you're damaged your numbers have gone up you've been had you got got and all this out and, and the other if you even think about if you think about the types of terms that we use to describe sex smash beat it up get it um don't give it up things like that right violent terms Beat, smash, tear down, rip up. Nonetheless, so if you guys haven't heard the, if you haven't heard the, um, 
If you haven't heard the, the, the things that he's been saying, go take a listen to those. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome to all the people who are coming into the broadcast. Welcome in. If you haven't heard his broadcast, go listen to it. Basically, this is the story. And if you, I, I don't want to go into everything. I, I just want to give my take because the rest of the stuff is out there. But I'll give you guys a brief little rundown. This all started coming up when he was on the radio and he started rehashing this, the, the, the way that he used to live his life. So he went and he, um, there was this girl that he says they were going to have intercourse. Or he, there was this girl that he was dating. This is the way he told the story. And you can listen to it and give your feedback as well. There was a girl, he went to the store, got some Spanish, some quote unquote Spanish fly, put it inside her drink, and she was incoherent. She was b b blacked out. She was like, oh. And he was like, she was just like, she was out of it. And he was like, he had intercourse with her. He had sex with her. But that's rape. And the people on the broadcast with him were like laughing. Ha ha ha, you, so you raped her basically. Oh. And he was like, no man, get out of here. That wasn't rape. And I think that, you know what, and I think part of the reason that some of my anger has come down is because I think there are a lot of people who participate in things like that every single day and as I make this video every six seconds of this video there's another person that's being raped as we talk and I'm hoping that this can can serve to educate some people alright so let's talk about let's talk about some of the okay some of the things that are sexual assault which we may not know are sexual assault coercion if you re remember that case where the C's is Anzari, where the girl went over to his home and she they went out on a date, she went to his house, and he kept asking her over and over and over again to have sex. She didn't want to have sex. She kept push, you know, pushing him away, getting away, whatever. And he kept coming more and more and more. Oh, let's have let's do this, let's do that, let's do, let's let's have sex, let's like pushing up, pushing up. That's called coercion, and that's a form of sexual assault. And many men just consider this to be persistence, but it's actually illegal. If somebody tells you no, listen, if a person, if a woman, if a girl, if she wants to have sex, you won't have to keep, oh, come on, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. You won't have to do that. You make the advance for the sex. If she's not interested in it, leave it alone. You don't want to wear it on a person's defenses. You don't want to put a person in a position where they feel like they can't say no. Where they feel, and especially if they're away from their home, they think that you may hurt them. They don't know if they're going to get out of there um, in, in one piece. They don't know if you're just going to take it anyway. And you just keep going and going and going for it. That's coercion. If the person can't leave, you drove them there, they don't have a way to get out, then that's kidnapping and coercion, which are, which are two different crimes. We also have... Um, we also have this thing called ongoing consent, right? And I remember when the Bill Cosby case came up, a lot of people... A lot of people were defending Bill Cosby because they were like, well, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. She went up to his hotel room. She knew what it was. Okay, so let's say, let's say a person initially may have been interested in having sex. Let's say a person went up to your home, your hotel room, your dorm room, or whatever, at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Let's say they had the intention of having sex, but then they got there... They smell the scent coming out of your shoes. They took one look at your stubble. And they were like, meh, I don't want to do it anymore. Just because a person goes someplace doesn't mean that you are owed any type of intercourse. And then let's say, let's talk about ongoing consent. A person can consent to one thing but not consent to everything. I put up a post early, I put up a post months ago that people were like, they were confused about whether or not the post was rape. Where it was like, the, it was like, oh, there were two people laying in bed and, and the guy was like, um, uh, the girl was like, take me, something, I don't know. And then the guy was like, so I effed her in the ASS and I did this and I did that and I flipped her over and boy was she mad. And I was like, that's sexual assault. There's this thing called ongoing consent where you can consent to one thing. And it's like, I read another post where it was talking about men and how men are 
very familiar with what ongoing consent is when it comes to their body because there may be a woman who is into strap on play but just because a man consents to one sort of intercourse doesn't mean that he's consenting to everything that she may want or like because if she takes him and she tries to penetrate if she tries to peg him with her strap on then all of a sudden he's like no that's not what I want but for some reason many men don't really seem to understand that many men don't really seem to understand that you may want one thing but not everything many men don't seem to understand you can have intercourse sometime in the past that doesn't guarantee you access to intercourse whenever you choose to and so hello to everybody welcome in welcome in and so I'll tell you I'll tell you guys a little bit about what happened to me I consent I was I was with um, I was with a, a a person who was an associate of mine and he was begging me, begging me to go down on me. And I did not want him to go down on me. I wasn't in the mood for that. He would not stop. Coercion would not stop going on and on and on and on and on until I relented for him to go down on me. And then there's this thing called bunny hopping where, and this is, I'm telling you this so that maybe this will help some young girl or some, some young man out there. It's called bunny hopping where they ask you to perform oral sex on you and as you're climaxing they hop up from where they are and then they start penetrating you or doing whatever the hell it, else it is that that they want to do either once they've gotten you into a position where you're partially undressed once you're in the in the throes of, of of passion or whatnot or climaxing or whatever the case may be and unfortunately my situation wasn't it wasn't that it wasn't that glamorous and you know i think a lot of people are a lot of people misunderstand exactly what rape looks like people think because like we, we 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 romanticize this we romanticize this in the movies where in the movies, it's like some man who's like, ha, ha, and she's like, no, get off of me, no. Most rapes are very, very quiet because as a woman, you're dealing with a person who is stronger than you are. So it's like you can stay there and you can get beat up, hurt even further, and the person still go ahead and take it, or you can be frozen, paralyzed with fear. You know, so it's like they're... We cannot dictate or predict how a person, quote unquote, should respond. We can't, we can't, we can't predict, we can't quote and dictate how a person should respond um, after or during duress. As a hypnotherapist, part of the way that we are able to get people into a state of hypnosis is from overwhelm. Like when people are out at a stage show, you think that those things are fake. They're not. There's a lot going on, a lot of noise, a lot of things that are happening. A person gets overwhelmed and they go into hypnosis. And so a person under an extreme amount of stress, anybody who's been in a car accident or a fight or any type of stressful situation, you know that at some point things are going in slow motion and you're like, what is going what's happening right now right or you really don't have a way if you've been in a car accident you know that you can see what is about to happen and you don't have a way to physically stop it so you go along with it because stopping it is only going to cause more damage to you in the car or in the bed so another phenomenon I want to talk about is Oh, I believe it, it did it say I did the research on it, but the, it is a four in a number. I believe it's 40 percent. There's a great number of women who go on to have sex with their attackers. Again, the person who and I don't want to use the word attack. They're rapists. And even the word rape is so sensa sensationalized that we that we're not even that we're not even, that we don't even really know what, what we, we, we think of it as rah, 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 when it's really not that, it's really just some person talking about, come on, come on, let me just, 
Let me just put it in. Come on. Let me just put it in. Come on, please. Please, let me just. That's, that's the way most rapes take place. From a person who just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing to try to put themselves inside of you. You know, so... <clears throat> I'm sorry if that was graphic for some people. I'm sorry if it was funny for others. But nonetheless, so um, so to, to, to go back to what it is that I was saying, um, and then I forgot what I was saying after that graphic display. But I think that, I think, um, ugh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. So let's go, let's jump in and hopefully I'll remember what it was that I was trying to say. Oh, I was saying 40% of women actually go off and have intercourse with their rapists again for many different reasons and one of the biggest reasons is because society teaches girls that once they've been had that the best part of them is taken the, the man has the best part of the relationship already he's gotten quote unquote what it is that he wanted so what else can you do when you've gotten got and there are actually scriptures in the Bible. Listen. <sighs> we teach girls that they've been used. There's scriptures in the Bible that says that if a man rapes your daughter, just like if he damaged your cow or, or damaged your property, that if he broke it, he bought it. Now he has to marry your daughter. And I'm like, well, from the father's standpoint and the rapist's standpoint, but what about the, the young lady who then has to be married to her rapist that she has to wake up to every night and every morning, a per, the person who raped her? And in some places, like in India, people rape on purpose. There's some places where people rape on purpose because once, once you've been sullied, once you've been dirtied in that way, your family can't get a dowry on you, you've been used up, so you, so nobody wants you at that point. And then, because there are many, you know what? I read a book, I read a book years ago. I read a book years ago, and the book was by, uh, it was by a pimp. And the pimp was like, there are many mothers, he, he was like, you talking about what I'm doing is wrong. There are many mothers out there who are pimping their daughters, who are selling their daughter's virginity or selling their daughter's sex to the highest bidder. And I'm not ignoring you all that are, that are writing. So hello, welcome in everybody. I'm not ignoring you guys. I just want to stay on, on, on focus because then I'll end up spending half of the broadcast saying hello to everybody and I want to upload this video in many different places and in the other places they're not going to be able to see your names except for here. So um, so nonetheless, so he was like, there are mothers who, who are pimping their daughters, selling their virginity in exchange for marriage, selling their virginity in exchange for marriage to the person who has the most money, selling their virginity and selling their sex in exchange for certain things. There are many women who are out there prostituting themselves. It's like when we, like I, I, I was talking the other day inside of a group about because like there was this guy who was like he wanted the benefits of having a girlfriend without the commitment of having of, of without the commitment of of being a boyfriend a husband or anything more right and so i was telling him i was like listen if you want the guarantee of no if you want the guarantee of no feelings because he was like, why can't we just have sex? I told her what it was before we started having sex. So he was going over to our house three times a week, um, buying groceries, spending time with her, going out and all this other stuff. But then still wanting to say, I'm not your man. And they were having sex and all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, you're acting. It's like your words are saying one thing, but your action is saying another. I, this is going to be a long video. I thought it was going to be a short video, but this is going to be a long video because I want to I, I want to get all of these points out because there's so much going on. So just bear with me while I while I get all of these points out, please. Okay. So I'm like your actions. You I'm like you're lying because you're telling us one thing. You're telling yourself another thing, and your body, your actions, your time, your attention is lying and saying something else to her. So I'm like, the only way that you can guarantee 
that you can have sex with no feelings involved is if you go and you pay a prostitute. Just pay a hooker and be able to have sex that you want. But it's like, no, they don't want to pay. They don't want to pay. They want to put, they want to get into this facade of, oh, this was supposed to be about Charlemagne, right? But it's all about society and everything. They want to put on this facade of a relationship where you're doing all of the things like a relationship without without being without having to commit and then this person this woman was like oh a dirty prostitute you want him to go to a dirty prostitute and all this other stuff and i'm like dirty prostitute women are prostituting themselves each and every day prostituting for dinner prostituting for time prostituting for attention and it's like why don't we just really say what it is you know what I mean? It's like we're entering into these transactions. And part of what's really upsetting to me, this is the part that really has me upset. Part of what's really upsetting to me is there's it's twofold. I'm going to say one and then I'm going to say the other. One of the things that's extremely upsetting to me is that in society, especially girls who have never had a father, girls who have bigger brothers, in society... We are teaching our girls that boys are our protectors, that men are the protectors, etc. Like this 15-year-old girl who was with Charlemagne. She was like, Charlemagne told her, he was like, look, I got you. I'm going to take care of you. You don't have to worry. I got you. And so she put her trust in him. And he spiked her drink. And as he was raping her, he was like, I told you I was going to take care of you. I told you I was going to take care of you. And then he let... All of his other, I was about to use some profanity, he let all of his friends then, quote unquote, take care of her too. And it's like, uh, half of the society we're telling them men are protectorates. And then the other half of society, we're talking to boys and we're telling boys, look, get that pussy by any means necessary. Get that ass. Make sure you get inside there. This is the, the proving of your manhood. So we're sending our girls out there ill-equipped. We're sending our girls out there ill-equipped to be able to, to deal with the reality of what we have out there. That there's some men who are happy that you're weaker than them. Some men who will use that to their, to their advantage. Some men, the, these fathers teaching their boys to go out there and prey on other people's daughters. Even fathers who have daughters. Another part of that that's sickening to me is that a group of men together... Would, 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 would stand there and the female body is so commodified, such a commodity, such and so objectified that she's not even a person, she's just a pussy on a bed that's passed out with access to it. And that a group of men would still go and F an unconscious person a person who may be afraid, a person who may not know how to get out of the situation. And in her case, a person who is 15 years old. And the thing is that it's happening right now someplace in America or around the world somewhere. There's some, there's, in, in South Africa, they do it so much that, it, that it, has a, it has a name. What is it called? It's called gang rolling. It's no, it's, it's trip rolling something. Please look that up. But in South Africa, gang rape happens so often they say that a girl has a greater chance of being raped in South Africa than learning how to read and it's like we spend so much time protecting the rapist so that when I put up this title Charlemagne the rapist that there will be people who will be like I don't do him like this this and the other there's no proof this that he admitted Bill Cosby admitted to rape too but that didn't really seem to matter for some people nonetheless let me go on so that's one of the things that makes me angry and then we're going to come back to that because this is how trafficking, uh, well, let's talk about it right now. This is how trafficking is so prevalent because it's like these men don't give a damn. They don't give a damn where the girl came from, whether she was taken from her country, whether she's there unwillingly, whether even if they see her beat up or track marks inside of her arm, they don't give a damn as long as the pussy is laying there waiting and available for them. They don't give a they're like, yeah, well, let me just get my nut off. And I'm like, where's the conscience? 
so that we teach so that we're teaching girls one thing and teaching boys another that by any means necessary it doesn't even matter if she's willing or able so it's like okay so let me get to the the, the, the second thing the second thing that just that really just burns my bacon about this Ugh, I didn't forgot my point <laughs> And somebody's mentioning R. Kelly. I can't even I can't even begin to say how disturbing it is that we live in a society that is constantly gaslighting women, constantly gaslighting women, so that you know how they say that black men are the white people of black people it's like you talk to a person and they just they just really don't get it it's like they really they, they just they don't they don't they, they they can't they can't understand how a person can agree to one thing and not agree to everything if a person is unconscious they cannot consent whether you went with them to the store to get and then the thing is oh Charlemagne changed up his story listen to his original broadcast and Jamila is saying, you're getting all worked up. I have a right to get worked up. As you're typing that, let me count five seconds. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Three, one thousand. Four, one thousand. Five, one thousand. Six, one thousand. Somebody's being raped right now. So yeah, I have, I, I have good reason to be worked up. So, oh, I can't think of the second thing. that I, I know the second thing that makes me angry, but I should have written it down. But I was like, it makes me so angry that I'm not going to forget it. So the first thing that made me angry is half of the society telling telling half of the society one thing. These are your protectorates. And then the other half of society telling the other half of society to get it by any means necessary. When I cut we'll do another we'll have to do another video another day. We'll have to do another video another day. I just wanted to get all of these points out. Um we talked about the Bible with making your daughter marry the rapist. In Islam, they'll stone you for adultery, having sex without being married. So that if you are raped, you get stoned and killed. And then they have, in some African culture custom, if you want to marry a woman, all you got to do is kidnap her and have sex with her. Because once you do that, and it's like, they can't go back home. They can't... They, 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 Wow, and so Nicole is writing some stuff that is, uh, you know what, I'm going to come back and I'm going to go into the comments and I'm going to respond to people inside of the comments. Because I um, uh, I want to remember the second thing that makes me so angry. I should have just said it before. But, uh, alright, so if that's the case, then I'm just going to just end, end the video just finishing up on Charlemagne the Rapist. And all of the things in society that helps to aid and abet this type of situation so that we have men out there who are going around not realizing that they're raping. And we got women out there going around feeling like something is not right but not realizing that they've been raped. And so I just, I wish that, I wish that there could be a way, I wish that there could be a way that we could... I wish that there could be a way that we could have more of these open conversations so that ugh, I still can't think of the second thing that that angers me but it has to do oh here it is I did write it down I did write it down oh good I just had to look in the right place all right this is the second thing that angers me to no end is that we're teaching both men and women that vagina is the best part of a woman. I remember when Keith, when Steve Harvey came out with that, that talking about you sitting on a pot of gold there, girl, and how you got to protect the vagina, you got to protect this, you got to protect that. Oh, once he got it, he got what he wanted, then he's gone, right? 
it's like we're teaching we're teaching boys and we're teaching girls that sex is the, that her vagina is the best part of her so that we have men out there that don't really know how to be in functioning relationships because they don't really they don't see I, I, I read these they, they don't see women as people I read these things all the time if I want a friend I'll go I'll, I'll go go I'll go hang with my boys if I want a friend I'll go hang with my boys because as long as you got a pussy ain't no friendship to be had there as long as you got a vagina between your legs you're not going to be regarded as just a, a human being that may be able to bring value and worth into a person's life outside of that which is between your legs that really burns my bacon because it's like we create these situations where we're like ah you you got to make sure whatever you do that he doesn't get but it's like sex is pleasurable but we encourage boys to go out there and experience this pleasure but then we discourage girls and then you know what the sad part about it and on this note after this after we talk about this I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to get out of here but it has it's spilled over into the gay community it's spilled over into the gay community so that those who penetrate are the ones with the power but the ones who take the penetration they get slut shamed it's like and, and it's like we it's like we don't understand how disrespectful it is to men to one posit men position men as if men have no damn control they're just beasts without sound mind as soon as a little whiff or fragrance or look of a woman with her ankle legs or a little bit of bottom showing no matter her age even if she's a child right now we got classrooms where girls are being sent home because they got on spaghetti straps because you don't want to distract distract these these animalistic boys because you know they're so effing out of control we got girls being sent home we got mothers telling their daughters that she better not wear that around the house even around her own father brothers cousins or her or, or whomever her own immediate family that she has to, to cover up and put on all of this other stuff instead of really because I, I was in an argument in a group yesterday I'm like I don't care because they were talking about this little girl she had on these little shorts she was doing a kiki challenge little Caucasian young girl and she looked so cute she was moving her little booty she was so cute and people were like look at her dressed like a little hoe like a little stripper this that and the other and I'm like I don't give a damn I don't give a damn. That little girl could be naked. She could be standing there naked with her little flat chest and her little hairless vagina. She could be standing there naked and dancing. And if something happens to your genitals, if your genitals twitch, you are the one with the problem. You are the one with the problem. So that we are punishing our girls for being sexy or sexual or being construed by somebody's constraints as sexy and sexual instead of holding men to task. Because it's like, when are we going to demand more of men so that we say, listen, men, stand up and be men. You want to be the rulers of this society? You want to be the ones that are on top? Show that you are worthy of it. Do you have self-control? Do you know how to control yourself when a little whiff of something comes your way? And I'm like, they were like, but there's pedophiles out there. I'm like, how long have you been thinking that pedophiles attack children because the children are too sexy? It's like... We children can't even be children anymore because we have to be worried. I remember my niece, she was born, she just come out of my sister's vagina. And she was being weighed on the scale. She was less than 10 seconds old. And I took a picture of her and put her on Facebook. And somebody wrote to me and told me that the newborn's vagina was showing. Hmm. And I'm like, where have we come as a society where we penalize nudity? We penalize the nude instead of the lewd, instead of the people who have a problem with nudity. And you all know, half of you all didn't see my ass. 
You didn't see my ass because when I had TKO skin, I showed my flawless skin. I did. And my ass was there in all its big, bulbous glory. It was. And people tried to make me ashamed. They're like, oh, there are children here. Cover up your ass. Or what? Oh, how dare you? You show your ass. Oh, look at you. People are going to think you're easy. And I'm like, it's a booty. And children love booties. When I would do my expos, the children would, they would be like, Mommy, look a booty. <laughs> if your child, if your child sees nudity and thinks something illicit of it, then you're doing something wrong. You're doing something wrong. We should, oh, you know what? I then got off into a whole other tangent. Let me just make sure I said everything. And then I'm going to come back and read all of your comments and comment. Charlemagne the Rapist pled guilty. We live in a society that tells men to get pussy by any means necessary. The Bible, Islam, and Hindu in India, how they all have these different problems with making women feel as if they've used up once they've had intercourse. The hatred that we have for men and men's bodies. That anybody... Have you noticed that we don't have those issues in the, in, in, in the communities that there, there's no penis? Have you ever heard of a lesbian slut? Have you? Have you heard of a lesbian slut? It's like once penis gets in the mix, things become dirty for women and men. Nobody wants their, and, and, and anybody who is, is a, gay, a gay male, when they told their family they were gay, their family wanted to, make, wanted to know whether they were the pitcher or the catcher, just so that they can have in their minds to know that, oh, well, at least my son or whoever is not taking dick. He's giving it. And we got so many men in the gay community meeting other men too ashamed to say that they like to be penetrated. Because once penis gets into the mix, we hate men's bodies so much that once a penis touches you, you're done for. This is why, this is why men feel as if they have to rape because their bodies are so, their bodies are so grotesque that they got to do whatever it is that they can do to make somebody take their body. I'll pay you, I'll trick you, or I'll hold you down. And then if there's a person who is open and willing and they're like, you know what, I like penis. Come bring this, bring this cocky my way. Unless you're, unless you're Caribbean, then it's a whole other story. But if there's a person who's like, yeah, I like dick. Bring this dick here. Then all of a sudden you're the one with the problem. They don't trust you. You're dirty. You, you're not worth anything. If you like dick, you're worth less. How much, how much do we hate the male body? And the thing is that... We feel like we are, we feel like we're placing men on top with these ideals, but we're actually placing men on the bottom. It's like we hate the male body so damn much that whenever the, whenever the penis touches anything, it is destroyed. Vagina increases your worth and penis diminishes it. Come on. How, how are men standing for this? How are men just okay? Ah, I said the Milky is saying you're way too deep for folks, Tanya. We ain't ready. All right. You guys don't have to be ready. I'm off this video now anyway. And I'm uploading this video everywhere. Share the video because I feel like these ideas need to be out there. Share the video. And if there's little clips of the video that you feel are more potent than other clips, share that too. Tag me in it and I'll share that clip as well. So on that note, I am out of here. I said everything that I wanted to say. I don't know how long the video is, but it's just the right length. Give me a hug. Hug me. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Whew. I love you all very, very much. Go out there and love one another. But most of all, what? What? That's right. Love yourself. Love yourself. And loving yourself is knowing that you are worth a person wanting to have intercourse with you. You are worth a person wanting to be excited. We have got to change the landscape of sex across this entire world. 
We have to let men know your body is worthy of a person wanting to be intimate with you. You are worthy of a woman who's like, damn boy, you look good and I want you. You're worthy of that. And women, you are worth more than just your vagina. You are worth more than your vagina. I remember when I was younger and I was dating, and this is the last thing I'm going to say and I'm going to get out of here. I remember when I was younger and I was dating. I remember that some of these men treated me like I wasn't even a human being. I was taught, listen, I was taught, oh, black men, this, black men, that, oh, dear, your brothers, you love one another, this, and I was treated like I didn't even come out of the body of a woman. Like I wasn't even a human being how some of these people treated me. Like I was nothing. Like they didn't care what lie they had to tell. What, what violence they had to enact. Whatever it is that they had to do. It, it was like I was not a human being. And I was like these are the people. I went to a historically black college. And it was utopia. Outside of college I was like. Do you not realize that I am your sister? I'm a human being. Do you not realize this? That you would treat me this way? And I was like... I, I was perplexed. And it's like how Charlemagne took that girl when she was 15 and did that to her. There's so many predatory males out there. So many predatory adults who use the innocence and the lack of information that children don't have to be able to take advantage of them. Whenever you meet a person who is significantly older than you and all they date are people who are significantly younger than them, there's a reason. There's some foul play that's happening. If oh, I can understand if it was a one-off thing. Oh, I just happened to meet this person that just took me completely by. But no, if all they date are people who are significantly less mature, less knowledge, less, less, less in the know than they are, there is a problem. There is a problem. And I wanted to finish off this video saying, you guys know that I'm a self-love specialist. I just wrote a book about self-love. Please get the book. I'm going to put the link down here. It's a very, very powerful book. Get the book. It's in pre-sales right now. And the book talks about how to really create those shifts because like I said, I've been, I've had violence enacted against me. I've been used. I've been abused. There have been a lot of things. I've been raped. My mother died when I was a teenager. There have been a lot of things that I've gone through and I still stay rooted and round, grounded in love, self-love for myself and other people. And I talk about the shifts inside of that book that I talk about the shifts inside of that book that that help me be able to create the the create the shifts mentally to be able to stay grounded in loving myself because it's very easy to lose yourself in self-hatred all of these things start people start treating you the way they treat you because they are lacking inside and it's easy to turn that inward on yourself and start self-abusing this is why self-love is my passion because self-love is the basis for everything. Name anything and I will tell you what the root of it is self-love. Well, we got people out there who are robbing, killing, stealing, beating. We got Trump in the office and the way that he's behaving. All of it is self-love. The fact that we value crude oil over people's lives, self-love. The fact that people would go over to Puerto Rico 12 days after the hurricane hit and there's people face down in water drowned and they take up their, their body and walk up their ass inside some nightclub while people are dead just 10 miles away. Self-love. All of it at the root and the base of everything is self-love from how you treat yourself to how you treat other people. It all starts with self-love. So it's like when I listen to any guru out there who is talking about anything, anything from the way that you pursue your dreams 
to the way that you ask for help or don't ask for help or give help or don't give help. It all is rooted in self-love. This is why self-love is my passion. Because you cannot talk about any relationship. You can't talk about romance. You cannot talk about marriage. You can't talk about parenting. Because your children come out the spitting image of all the things that you hate about yourself. Your children will bring those up in you. You will see the things that you hate about yourself in your children. I had a young lady who wrote to me today talking about how her self-love is so low. So low. All she wanted to do was get married. Then she got married and her husband is, is abusive. Now all she wants to do is have a child. And I'm like, go back to basics. Self-love is at the root of it. Because I'm like, now you want to go bring a baby into this mess. It's all... It's so, you guys are right. I'm getting worked up. I said I was going to get off of the video after that last one. But listen, I love you guys. One more hug. Hug, 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 hug. All right. And on that note, I'm going to jump into the comments and I'm going to be talking to you all in the comments. All right. So, yes, Tanya TKO. And I am out. Love yourself and one another and get my self love book. Get the book. It's on pre sales right now. So, if you want to be one of the first to get it, get the book. All right. So, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for listening and hearing me out and for sharing your truths as well. And I'm going to jump into the comments and talk to you right now. Peace.